Hey guys, it's Lydia here from LA 3D Painting, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to create those really cool time lapses, but today we're going to be doing it without Octoprint. So, let's get started. Alright guys, so if you haven't seen already, there has been lots of really cool 3D printing time lapses going around the 3D printing community, um, and basically it's showing the print, basically just printing without the print head in, like on top of it, it's like over in the corner, um, and there's a super cool way to do it. A lot of people um, mostly use um, Octoprint, which is using Raspberry Pis and a different thing to basically um, connect uh, your printer through uh, wirelessly, and um, it's actually a really cool way, but um, I do not have Octoprint on most of my printers, except for the Robo uh, C2, but a lot of people um, want to know how to do this without that, and today I'm here to show you guys how to do that. So this is actually not my original um, idea. Uh, Devin over at Make Anything, which I do talk about him a lot on my channel, he's actually figured out a way, um, and he's actually designed a little cool mount for your um, CR10, or I use mine on my TiVo Tornado, and a little finger device to um, basically let the print head move over, touch the button, wait, and then move back. And um, he uses his DSLR and a remote for that. And he also uses Simplify 3D, which not everybody has because it is a very expensive um, slicer. And a lot of people do use Kira, so this is what I'm gonna be showing you guys how to use it on today, is Kira. So I do use both of his um, STLs that he's designed, the finger part and then the remote holder. And surprisingly, the remote holder um, holds the GoPro remote, which I have, which I will be using today um, very nicely. I just actually had to put a popsicle stick behind it to keep it from uh, bending back when it gets pushed. But yeah, so we're going to be using a GoPro and a GoPro remote and then his um, his STLs, his models, and then we're going to be using a um, G-code set that the 3D Printist actually um, created. Now he is a YouTuber, I believe, but he also has Instagram. He's not a very big printer guy, um, I'm not sure. I really haven't heard of him before, but he's definitely helped me out a lot in this. He's helped me figure out how to actually get it to work because I have had some frustration actually figuring out how to do this on my TiVo because um, the Kira thing was a little different and I'm still actually tweaking it a little bit but as of now I've gotten it working and at the end I will show you guys the really cool time lapses that I have figured out how to do so I really hope you guys enjoy this and let's basically get started on how to do this so the first thing you need to do is go over to my mini factory and go to uh, Devin's um, page and then I will actually link where you need to go in the description um, to his STL files where you can download those. You print them out. Um, I printed the um, remote holder with supports. I didn't use his manual supports because the first time I tried that they did not work and then I used 35% uh, infill just to make it strong enough and then the finger part you need to actually print in TPU to actually make it work so that is one uh, harder thing that not everybody has is TPU. You can try using it with normal PLA or whatever it's just when it pushes it, it needs cut, it needs to kind of bend um, so I'm actually uh, glad that I have TPU because I printed in my black TPU and then there's a little part that holds the actual finger onto the area where the fan is which I will show you guys up close in a little bit but um, you just need to print those out and then assemble them I will link in the description below how to assemble them they were in his video that he did so I'll show you guys what the setup looks like and um, then we'll go from there all right so this is what the setup looks like um, over here is the remote holder and as you can see right now I am actually filming a time lapse um, so over here, this is the remote holder, which I printed in the Sunlu Blue PLA Plus. And then right here is some IO Robotics Yellow PLA. Um, as you can see, there's kind of a line right there that was uh, what broke. And then here's the finger made out of Ziltex TPU. And then there's a little bit of gray, there's a little gray piece, as you can see, um, where the finger is connected. Just because this is where the finger is supposed to be, but it was too tall to actually reach the um, button on my remote. So there's a little gray piece that you print um, that actually slides in, there's a hole down here. And then I actually just cut that off and then put the finger on there so it would reach it. But if you're using a different remote, you might just be able to use this part. Um, but it was actually super easy to assemble. Again, like I said, I printed two of these. The first one I printed with um, Devon supports, which were not good at all for my printer. Um, and then I actually had to use a couple different screws to um, put it in there to um, keep the 
the, the belts tight and then um, you just screw in the two little screws for the fan and it's a super simple setup again I will link in the description below Devin's video so you guys know um, how to actually assemble it just because I've already assembled this and it's actually taken me a long time to get it perfectly set and everything but other than that this is the setup so the second thing you need to do is to figure out how far um, you need to set uh, or how far you need to move it over to press the button so um, basically what I did was I um, homed the Z axis or the X axis and then I would just move it over as much until it would actually press the button and then I would record that so with the um, GoPro button you it has to touch it and then move back a little bit because if you hold it on there it won't um, take a picture so um, it, my distance is 289 to actually press the button and 288 just to um, move it back a little bit more and I'll show you guys how to um, fix your g-code and everything to get it um, to the numbers and everything set but basically what it does is it moves it over presses it pauses just a second so it will take the picture and then moves back to the exact spot where it was now there's one flaw in this thing that I haven't figured out yet which I might figure out by the end of this video is the retraction when it pulls away as you can see there is um, some stringing down there on the bottom because it's not retracting and um, retracting when it goes away and comes back so there's a little bit of mess up but that depends if it's going to stick inside your print or outside you might have to clean it up a little bit after um, printing but other than that these time lapses turn out really cool um, so uh, let's go show you guys what the settings and the g-code look like in Kira so checking out Kira sorry today we are not going to be using the screen recorder just because it has a little bit of delay but when you open up Kira you put in your file and you do all your normal settings over here but then you go up to extensions and go to post-processing and modify g-code um, and then what you're going to want to do is uh, here I'll delete this for you guys you want to go to add script go down to search and replace and this is what you come up with so what you want to put in search is just layer and then that and you're just gonna leave like that you do not want to put any layer because if you put a number layer then it will only do that layer instead of doing every layer um, in the print and then what you want to do next is um, I will have this um, down in the description so this is the entire G code which you need to copy and just paste it in here now my settings will be way different than yours depending on uh, what printer you're using I'm pretty sure you can do this with any printer um, you're just gonna have to make that little um, remote holder on the side uh, to hold your remote but as you can see here I already have my settings in so um, I actually left the original Y to 210 um, but then my X is again like I said 288 to that's where it'll move and then to poke it as you can see here is 289 and that was my uh, perfect spot to um, poke it and then to move it back a little bit like I mentioned um, when you poke the remote it can't stay at the remote because then it won't um, take the picture so then I just put the code for move back to um, 288 and then to pause it to make it wait just a second to take the picture um, the code is G4P500 and then again I just put it to 288 and that just means wait and then there's a layer down here again do not put a number in front of this um, just so that it will do the entire print instead of doing just one layer uh, which I had a little bit of frustration with but then um, again the 3D printist helped me out with that so um, once you paste that in there you're basically done you just press close and again you just do all your normal print settings whatever you want um, again I'm still trying to figure out how to do the retraction every time it moves um, but in the slicer it just looks like a normal print but once you set it up on your printer it will move over and um, poke each time to take a picture and um, that's basically it this is not a very hard uh, thing to do it's actually super easy um, and it actually turns out really cool instead of having to use octoprint which not everybody is available to and instead of using simplify 3d which is very expensive you can just use Kira and this is a super easy way so um, this is basically it and I hope you guys um, figured that out and if you guys have any questions just let me know down in the comments 
Alrighty guys, so again, that was a super easy way to set it up. Now I know I didn't um, show you guys how to actually uh, set up the rig. Again, I will leave a link in the description to Devin's video on how to do that. Um, I just wanted to show you guys um, how to basically do it in Kira because it is super easy once you actually figured it out. Um, again, thank you to the 3D Printist. Um, he helped me out with a lot of things and got me to figure this out. And it actually turned out really awesome. And uh, actually, right now, I'll show you guys what the video and the time lapse look like. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know, again, it wasn't a lot of detail on actually how to set this up, but I just wanted to make sure I got to the point of showing you guys how to set it up in Kira because that is um, one thing that a lot of people use is Kira and not Simplify 3D, which Devin showed on his video. But again, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, everything that you need to know will be linked in the description below. If you need any help, just let me know down in the comments. Um, I also have Instagram and Twitter, so you can tweet me any questions you want, or you can just DM me on Instagram, which a couple of people have done. Um, again, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope you enjoy your cool new time lapses. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.